Americans and all good people around this world, a Muslim leader, a follower of Muhammad the Prophet, Imam W. Dean Muhammad. Thank you. We greet you with the Muslims greeting the greetings of Islam. Peace be unto you. Assalamu alaikum. We always thank God. We begin by thanking God for our presence here, for our life and our presence here on this day. And we trust our Lord Creator, Allah, in the language of our religion, the Quran, the Arabic language of the Quran. We trust Him to protect us against strain, making mistakes, are coming from our weaknesses. We trust that he will always protect us so we do not stray, do not make errors, to confuse or worse, make worse the life of those who are listening to us. We pray that he protect us so we will always come from our strengths and not from our weaknesses. <clears throat> this is the day we celebrate July the 4th. I don't know how many Muslims take this day to be our day in a very special way. But I do. And I do because I was taught as a little child, I can recall, before I was eight years old, sitting in chairs like you were sitting in, listening to the ministers preach for my father and preach for the nation of Islam. And I can recall my father also saying that Mr. Farad, that he said was his savior, and my mother said too to us it was her savior, and he said to the nation of Islam that, it is, that he, this man, was the, the savior for the black man, not just Muslims, but for all black people as we taught. He said that uh, that person called Mr. W. D. Farad, W. F. Muhammad, different names, came to America on July 4th, 19, uh, pardon me, July 4th, 1930. July 4, 1930. This is documented, you know. This has been documented. This is in the printed materials, the very special printed materials of the Nation of Islam. He came on July the 30th, uh, pardon me, he came on July the 4th, 1930. July 4, 1930. I've heard my father speak on that. And, and what he said, I can give it to you in one sentence. He said he came on their Independence Day so that we will, become, will be one day independent. That's what he taught. That's what he taught. And, uh, well, that's not the topic for today, uh, but it, it, it is a big part of what I will be presenting to you today. The topic for today is a healthy patriotism. But this is also Patriotism Day. I don't know how many of you all know what patriotism is, or what a patriarch is. A patri a patriotism is from patriarch. And patriotism is the support uh, uh, 
uh, loyalty and support and sacrifices that the patriarch makes for his country or his fatherland. No, I didn't say motherland. I said fatherland. Fatherland. <clears throat> Although he also has a motherland. His motherland is the whole of the people and his land. That's his motherland. But his fatherland has even a deeper meaning. <clears throat> now, bear patiently with me. I don't like to speak without notes, and I got them right here in my pocket. So let me pull them out. I never like to speak without notes. So I, I, I uh, wanted to introduce Independence Day to you and patriotism to you. But I also want to share with you my experience as an observer of my itself, my personal experience, as an observer of this day, as Independence Day for the American people, or the people of America. I, my experience is that this is a fun day. It's a fun day. When I think of this day, I think of families with their people, parents with their children, going out uh, when the weather is good and drinking lemonade and playing games and, and just having fun, having a good time. That's what I think of it as. Eat uh, roasted weenies and roasted marshmallows and stuff like that, you know. Uh, that's what I, yeah, yeah, I think some of you are here. Yeah. Good to know you're here. Yeah, my friends, some of my real friends are here. I heard their voices, heard their chuckles. <laughs> yes. Um, <clears throat> so I do think of it as a fun day, and I think most Americans, families and children and parents think of this day as a fun day, fun day. And <clears throat> I guess when we, I don't know if you do it, but I like to go see the fireworks. Yes, sir. Yep. I never did like to make the fireworks myself, <laughs> but I like to go to see those who had the uh, fireworks and watch them and watch their fireworks. And I go to the big fireworks, you know. I don't like the little fireworks. I like the big fireworks, where they shoot them up in the air and they burst open and, and all those beautiful colors just unfold, come out. Once I saw one, the Imam Muhammad Siddiq, he told me, since we've been together for the second day now we've been together, um, Imam Siddiq of uh, Indianapolis, uh, Indiana, he was telling me that once he saw them light up the sky with the American flag, I did too. I saw it once. The, the American flag come, came out of the explosion and you saw the American flag up in the sky. Beautiful, beautiful, exciting, exciting fireworks. Like the beautiful rainbow, all the beautiful colors that come out of the, come out of the, the, the works, the fireworks. <clears throat> so that's one way of looking at uh, the 4th of July in that fun, fun picture, you know. Having fun, we're having fun, we're having a good time. But we should not forget the real meaning of the 4th of July, and it's very serious. It's very serious. <clears throat> and a true patriarch, his, patri his patriotism is formed upon that serious meaning, or formed out of that serious meaning of the 4th of July, 4th of July. Now numbers have meaning, especially in scripture, in Revelations. I don't mean the book of Revelation. I mean Revelation, Quran, any book that God revealed. 
Bible, Quran, what God revealed. And, that, and those books, numbers, have meanings. And it's given to us in the Quran. So we, learn, so we understand that number. It's plainly given to us in the Quran. Numbers have meaning. But it says, you know, God gives so much. God created the whole world in six periods of time. Or in six days, as it's written, the days. But remember, it says a day, one day with the Lord is as a thousand years. So the day is not just a one day, 24 hour day. It says he created the world in six days, or some, they translate six periods, because they understand that this is not six 24 hour days, and they don't like to say six days, because the English reader may think it means six days of our date, of our time, of our calculation. Um, so they say six periods of time <clears throat> in the translation. Yes. Um, so these numbers have meaning. And God says he, his charity, his goodness it, uh, can be seen in uh, the corn that grows for us in the garden. And the stalk may, buy, may bear seven years of corn, less or more, seven years of corn. And on each ear, a thousand grains, thousand corns, kernels, little kernels of corn. Now, a oh, hundred, oh, pardon me, I think it says a hundred grain. Hmm? That's okay. It ain't that big a deal. I'm thinking, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm taking, the, taking a lot of seriousness out of these numbers. But in, a, but in another place, God says, he is the one that gives without counting. Now, look, now pay attention to that. He, he gives without counting. Although he said a parable of his goodness as charity is the corn that grows. And each ear has so many grains of corn, you know. But he says that he gives without counting. Now, that's the God I worship. That's my God. That's the God I say. He ain't, he ain't like some of you stingy people. Got to count everything you give somebody. Got to count it. A, a real generous person just reach in his pocket and get something and put it in your hand. He may not even see what he gave. You may have to tell him what he gave. Yeah, there's some people just that charitable, just that kind and generous. They reach in their pocket and whatever they get their hand on, they give it. And that's it. Muhammad the prophet, when he but he was trusted with the wealth of the people, all of his people, his followers. And uh, when they needed something, he didn't even go in the thing and get it himself. He told them, go to the treasure and get what you need. And they would go and get what he needed. He didn't know how much they were going to get. They go to the treasure and get what you need. So one fella was walking back from the treasure and he couldn't, he kept falling, it was so heavy, he kept falling. So the prophet told him, leave some of that there. Take, take only what you can carry comfortably. I subscribe to the Southtown Daily, and I also get the Sunday Southtown. And on the front page of Sunday, Sunday uh, Southtown today is the meaning of patriotism. Headline, right on the front page, big. It was the biggest, biggest, what you see first is the flag and uh, that uh, patriotism, patriotism. And it gives a definition of uh, patriotism. And on patriotism, it says beyond flag wa the flag waving, parades, yeah, I forgot to mention the parades there, Fourth of July Day parades too, fireworks of and fireworks of Independence Day, our public, f the spirit is defined by sacrifice, loyalty, service, and kindness, and kindness. Also, carried in the, paper, in the Tribune, Chicago Tribune, uh, 
uh, was something on this day also. And uh, if we want to understand what this day means, we have to do some research. Because most of us are not in touch with the true history and unfolding of the development of our perception or ideas uh, around patriotism, you know, or that support patriotism. Most of us are not in touch with that. We just follow the, the habits or tradition of our country, our people in our country. So for us, it's just a day to have fireworks, roast weenies and marshmallow, miller, uh, and uh, drink lemonade, sour with the sweet in it, you know. Uh, and that's about it for us. Thomas Jefferson is credited and remembered for giving us the language liberty life liberty and the pursuit of happiness life liberty and the pursuit of happiness now if Mr. Farad the teacher of my father who brought the plan for the nation of Islam and left it with my father. If he came, said he came on this day, July 4th, 1930, I'm sure if he didn't see the people at that time responding to him and being curious to study what he was saying, you know, most people, they hear something and just hear it, that's all. They don't give it any thought. That's in the Quran too, that's in our holy book, and in the Bible. It says there are many clear signs that God gives. gives. They're all around, they're everywhere. It says, but most of the people go along heedless. Heedless means they pay no attention to it. They never reach their mind. So I imagine that those who were listening to Mr. W. D. Farrar, or Mr. Farrar Muhammad, whatever you want to call it, were the same. They just heard the words, but didn't give those words any serious attention. I did. From the earliest days of my life, I gave everything, especially that came from my mother and father, to me. Serious attention. Can't recall a time when I didn't give it serious attention. I wanted to understand it. Little boy, but I wanted to understand it. Didn't just want to hear it, I wanted to understand it. And I wanted to understand it because I wanted to make it a part of my life. I wanted to take it in, as we say. I didn't just want to hear it. I wanted to take it into myself. I felt everything that they were giving me was needed in my life. So if I'm going to include it or incorporate it in my life, I want to understand it. And I want to feel that I know what I'm putting into my life. Now, ain't but a few souls born like that in the world. Most of us don't care. We don't, we're not serious. We're not that serious about life. Yes, I'm sure Mr. Farrar was thinking of our being deprived of liberty. When he came, we were discriminated in the South. We were treated like unwanted animal level people. That's right. 
That's how we were treated. I'm not talking about slavery. I'm talking about 1930. The law wasn't changed until 1960 or after. So we had no liberty guaranteed to us when Mr. Farrar came. So he saw people in a country that claimed to be a country of democracy for all and freedom and liberty and justice for all. But he saw that there was a certain race that had been excluded from that, wasn't even recognized as a human being on the level to qualify for that. You say, oh, but that was the South. I'm not talking about in the time of the 13 colonies. I'm talking about 1930. In the time of the United States. The president was the president of all the states in the South and the North. And he couldn't be president unless he got the votes of the South and the North. But he tolerated the South treating us like we were animal level people and not qualified for the rights of the majority of the citizens of the country. The, the president tolerated that. And by the way, it was a Republican president. I'm not saying anything to encourage you to vote for President Bush. I want you to know that. It's just a coincidence that President Bush is also a Republican. It was a Republican president, a general, a great soldier, a great person, a great man, Dwight D. Eisenhower, who came out as a soldier to defend our rights to be included as human beings on a level with everybody else. Yes, that's something we forget too. Something we forget. We shouldn't forget those things. And our leaders who know those things should make it a point to keep their constituency aware of these important things. Now, I belong to neither party. I don't belong to the black people's Jesus Christ party. You call the Democrats. I don't belong to that party. And I don't belong to the public part. I'm a free man in this country. <laughs> and I support what I believe to, to be deserving of my support. I don't care whether it's Republican or Democrat or Democrat or Republican. I'm looking for the right person. When you think about the parties, the symbol of one is a donkey. A dumbass. I'm speaking from the dictionary now. I'm just plain, you know. I don't want you to misunderstand it. I want you to get the full meaning. I want to be sure you got the full meaning. I can speak your language too. And the other one's symbol is an elephant. A big, massive creature. Huge, massive creature. whose nose is very unique. Can't find any living creature with a nose like that. He can give himself a shower with his nose. He can eat something as small as a little peanut, pick it up with his nose and put it in his mouth. And he can take that nose and, 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 and tighten the muscle up in it, push down the wall of a building like a bulldozer. That nose is something. The only thing that I find that seems to warrant the attention and, and admiration, like that nose, is his uh, 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 equilibrium 
equilibrium, all that massive weight, he can walk across something no more than two inches or an inch wide if it's strong enough to hold it. He can get up on it and walk a little small edge. And not only can he walk it, he'll balance himself on one foot, raise all that huge thousands of pounds of weight, raise it up and stand on one foot. Now I'm telling you, a sight like that makes you forget about Bruce Lee. <laughs> Just washed out his name completely. And that's a symbol for the Republican Party. Big, massive creature. Now, I can't identify with either one. I don't have enough money to buy an elephant. And I don't want a donkey. Getting back to the 4th of July. 4th of July. Now you know that, do you know the Klan, KKK? Some of you remember. <laughs> Don't think they weren't, they weren't, they weren't patriots. They're patriots. White Citizen Council, patriots. Now these are the enemies of our rights, right? The enemies, enemies of our coming in to our rights as citizens of this country. But they pay, they're patriot, patriots too. So how your patriotism will form depends on your perception of the land itself. If you perceive the land as a land that was opened up for whites only, then your patriotism is going to look quite different from Thomas Jefferson and others who perceived this land as a land for all people and, may, and, and wrote, <coughs> pardon me, and wrote des descriptions of the beliefs and principles that they held put it in writing, documents to live for as long as we live in this country. Language that was designed to accommodate not only Christians, but other people who will come be coming to this land of freedom and opportunity. Wise men with good hearts and foresight, planning this nation, planning the building of this <coughs> political edifice <coughs> of government, the United States, so that one day it will not be an offense to any good person, any good and well-meaning person, that it will welcome the Buddhist, it will welcome the Muslim, it will welcome the Hindu, it will welcome the Jew, it will welcome the uh, everybody that come with good intentions and well-meaning. And certainly, every nation, every color. Nothing in their language to exclude any that should be accepted. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men, didn't leave out of one, are created equal and are endowed by their creator, recognizing a creator over all of us. Yes, Therefore, they were religious. They, they, they made it clear they believed in God. And they did not take authority that belonged to God. So they say these rights are inseparable from the people. They, are, <clears throat> they, are, uh, they can't be taken from the people. These rights are inalienable or unalienable, they cannot be taken from the people. The people cannot be alienated from those rights, or taken from those rights, separated from those rights. By government, or by any other power, because those rights 
have been given to them by virtue of their creation, their nature, by their creator God. Yeah. So their language didn't exclude anybody. So the idea, and the idea that the South imposed upon the whole country and made us suffer under it was really unconstitutional from the very beginning. They shouldn't have needed to amend anything. The amending is done so that history will be continuous and not lost. That's the only reason why it was necessary to make amendments. They said it did it to have law. Yes. Well, the, the body, the, the Constitution itself is like an organism. 